Hey church, I'm so excited to dive into scripture with you today. We're going to be looking at Psalm chapter 1, verse 1 through 2. It says, Happy are those who reject the advice of evil people, who do not follow the example of sinners, or join those who have no use for God. Instead, they find their joy in obeying the law of the Lord, and they study it day and night. This is such great scripture. It's so much wisdom in here. And I was praying, God, what are you trying to show us through this? And I felt like it was very clear that he was reminding us that sometimes evil is very obvious. Okay. Uh, there are things in this world that you look around, you read the news and you think, I do not partner with that. It is so obviously evil. It is so obviously against the word of God. Um, or maybe even someone in your life who's giving you advice. You know, you're at a crisis time and they're giving you advice and you think, this is bad advice, right? This person doesn't know the Lord, doesn't meditate on their scripture, and they're giving me a worldly answer. And so my spirit knows that that's wrong. What is difficult to tell is those everyday decisions where it may not be so obvious. Those little steps that can take us farther and farther from the statutes of God. So you think about the example of like being in the ocean, right? And you're on a raft, and then before you know it, Little by little, you floated so far from where you started, and it takes a long time to get back sometimes. So I think one way to gauge where you're at in your life is by asking, who is defining these big things in life for me? Am I letting the world tell me, or am I looking to scripture for that definition? So you may think, you look on Instagram, and you're telling me, this is what beauty is. This is the definition of beauty. And then you realize, wait a second, no, it's not. I remember that scripture says that she is clothed in strength and dignity, right? Those are the things that make us attractive. Those are the things that make us beautiful in the eyes of the Lord. Or maybe you're letting the world just define entertainment for you, saying it's okay to watch this. Everybody watches it. Or, you know, this song isn't that bad. <laughs> or we're all going to go see the movie. It's okay if I just look once or twice right? But then we have to remember, no, scripture tells me to set my mind on what is pure, what is true, what is honorable and praiseworthy. So these are the times when we have to decide who am I partnering with? Am I joining with these, with sinners who have no use for God? Or do I need to remind myself what scripture says? And those are the people that I need to join with. Those are the people I need around me echoing scripture. So the, the last part is the promise. It says, instead, they find their joy in obeying the law of the Lord and they study it day and night. What are you studying? Is it bringing you joy? Are the people around you studying the things of the Lord or the things of this world? It can be a really challenging topic, but the, the beautiful thing is, is that when you choose God, you don't have to do it going, Oh, I have to do this because God doesn't want me to have any fun or God doesn't want me to watch that show that everyone's watching, even though I won't even know what they're talking about at the lunch table tomorrow. But you know that when you truly study the scriptures, knowing that he wrote them for you, that you would have revelation of his love for you and his plan for your life, that you would find true joy and knowing that the people around you are doing the same thing. You are partnering with those around you to find joy and studying the word of the Lord and falling more in love with him every day. That's where our true joy comes from. God, we thank you for your word and that it sets us back on track, Lord, sometimes when we miss it. Uh, we're thankful for your grace, that where sin increases, grace increases all the more. So right now we repent, God, of times that we've let the world define our lives for us. Jesus, we say that that honored place belongs to you. We fix our eyes on you and we look to you and your word to be the defining factor in our lives and the filter with which we see the world around us. God, we thank you that we are chosen and set apart and that that is not a burden to us, Lord, but it is something to be valued. God, we thank you for the price you paid, that we could have this communion with you, Jesus. Uh, we thank you for the joy, the true joy that it brings in our life. We bless your name, Jesus. Amen.